Tea Party Patriots Action Election Integrity Project is a project to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. We are working to build permanent election integrity infrastructures in key states around the country. These will consist of statewide coalitions and local election integrity task forces. Everyone should care about the fact that we have free and fair elections. In Georgia, we just finished an election integrity tour. At each of these stops, we worked to make sure that we were explaining the problems that happened in 2020 in the election in Georgia. And then we talked about how we can address and solve those problems. We need a permanent election integrity task force in your county. So we need to be working together. I loved this. It gave me step-by-step -step instructions on how to do things within my own county. We're giving people a plan of action. We're going to connect them into working groups and, and have them working together. And then beyond that, we are starting to build that statewide coalition. We have a good support group locally, but this is really connecting us with the rest of the state and the nation. The election integrity infrastructure is really going to be a citizens-based effort where citizens serve as a check and balance to the entire process, to the laws, and to the local election workers. It's about understanding your election office, making sure these votes are counted correctly, regardless of what your political affiliation may be. In working to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat, that's really not a partisan issue. That is an American issue. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome co-founder of the Tea Party Patriots, Jenny Beth Martin. Good morning, CPAC. Thank you so much for having me. It has been such an amazing CPAC. Wasn't Nigel Farage absolutely amazing? It's going to get even better later this afternoon when President Trump speaks. Let me see a show of hands. How many of you think President Trump was the best president of our lifetimes? And how many of you think Joe Biden was the worst president of our lifetimes? Joe Biden hasn't even been in office for two years, and already he's doing so much damage to our country. We have the highest inflation we've had in decades, eating away at the value of every dollar that we earn. Violent crime is rising in our cities all across the country. Illegal immigrants are surging across the border, and the federal government is doing nothing to secure the border. Schools are indoctrinating our children, our teens, young adult college students with woke, radical, divisive agenda based on critical race theory and critical social justice theory. And our military seems to be more focused on pronouns than on supporting and defending our Constitution. Joe Biden's weakness on the world stage has invited aggression and led to the biggest war in Europe since the end of World War II. It's no wonder that according to a July Monmouth poll, 88% of Americans think we are on the wrong track. 88%. Thanks to the wisdom of our founders, we have the opportunity to change course because our founding documents say that our government derives its just powers from the consent of the governed. In 94 days, we will have the chance to show that when it comes to the radical leftist agenda, we do not consent. Americans can, cho can choose to make a change to get us back on the right track. In the United States of America, elected officials get their authority from the consent of the governed. And if there is no election integrity, there is no consent. We all know elections have consequences. And we've learned election integrity has consequences too. Our liberties are only as secure as our elections. Let me repeat that again. 
our liberties are only as secure as our elections. You remember when Ben Franklin left the Constitutional Convention, he was asked by a lady what kind of government the delegates had given us. And he answered, a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. An answer and a challenge. And a Tea Party Patriots action since our founding, and especially in the last year and a half, we have taken up that challenge. We've been working on election integrity in coalition, in concert with our coalition partners, like the Conservative Partnership Institute and Cleta Mitchell. We've traveled the country, working at the grassroots level to build a permanent election integrity infrastructure with, a state, with statewide coalitions and local election integrity task forces to train poll watchers and poll workers to teach our fellow citizens how they can get involved to make a difference to have honest, secure, and transparent elections. Because our liberties are only as secure as our elections. Does this make a difference? It does, absolutely. Let me give you an example. In Georgia, in the primaries this year, the statewide election integrity coalition was able to place 1,500 poll watchers and 300 poll workers. And in DeKalb County, Georgia, the Election Integrity Task Force, headed by Marcy McCarthy, worked to build relationships across the political aisle. They befriended election workers. They recruited poll workers and poll watchers, and they were prepared in case any issues arose. And when an issue did arise, they were ready to take action. There was a problem with a Democratic, with one of the, with one Democratic primary race. And the, it was actually the candidate who caught the mistake. You see, she realized that in her own precinct, she had no votes for herself. Now, she knew she had voted for herself, so she thought there should be one vote for her. And her husband said he voted for her, so she thought there should be two. Now, he might have thought he could get away with not voting for her and he, no one would ever find out, but that's highly unlikely. So she should have had two votes in her own precinct. The machine count was wrong and she started asking questions. The Election Integrity Task Force was in place observing and they volunteered to help if needed. Leadership in both political parties set aside their differences and work to resolve the problem. In the end, the local election board voted to, or decided to do a hand count of this particular race. And election employees and volunteers worked throughout the entire weekend on Memorial Day to get this race correct. And in the end, this candidate, who was originally in third place, wound up being the first place finisher and was entitled to go on to the runoff. And today, she is the Democratic Party's um, nominee for this county commission race. Now, I do want to be clear, there was an anomaly in this particular race. There was a candidate who withdrew from the election, and we suspect the problem was somehow removing that candidate completely from the ballot created the problem. The point here is this. In the end, in that race, the certified election results were correct. There was no need for a lawsuit, no need for a court case. And since, the, well, and then the point, and the activists here made a difference. The certified results in that race, that one race, were correct, and the people in that community could trust the outcome of that race. These activists are ordinary Americans, just like all of you here today. They got involved and decided to make a difference, and you, can make a difference too. You can start, you can help by starting an election integrity task force in your county if one does not exist, or join one that already exists. You can sign up to be poll watchers, or better yet, work the polls as an election worker, or judge, or inspector of the elections. You can befriend and begin building a personal relationship with your election administrator or supervisor or clerk of elections. 
You can learn how the election process in your county works from beginning to end. Tea Party Patriots Action has the tools to help you do this at transparentelections.com. Transparentelections.com. Our American experiment is in self-government is 246 years old through world wars and civil wars, through depressions and boom times, through terrorist attacks and viruses and terrible responses to viruses, Americans have continued to pass the torch of liberty from one generation to the next. Our founders were brilliant and wise men. They bequeathed to us a republic and the tools to maintain it if we have the courage and the integrity to do the hard work to keep it. They recognize that our rights flowed from our creator to us, and then government is merely a, 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 a man-made construct created to secure those God-given rights. Belief in our creator was fundamental to our founders' concept of self-government, and it doesn't stop with them. Ronald Reagan understood our creator's relevance in more modern terms. During the course of his campaign in 1980 with his only debate with Jimmy Carter, he said, the American dream is not that every man must be level with every other man. The American dream is that every man should be free to become whatever God intends he should become. We are here today because we want to make a difference with the same courage and conviction our forefathers had when they took on the biggest empire in the world and won. With that same spirit, Ronald Reagan taught us, grateful that we still live in an America where we are free to become whatever God intends we should become. And take note, all of you who love and cherish this country and are concerned because our country is on the wrong track, you are not alone. Liberty will not die under our watch. We will never give in. We will never stop fighting. Our children and grandchildren are depending on us to dig deep, be brave, and trust in God, to protect them from those who seek to corrupt their hearts and minds, to secure our elections so that they still matter, and to secure the blessings of liberty for their generation. And we will succeed. We will keep this republic. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.